What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. In this episode, we are going to be working on some of the more complicated roof details. We have to build a cricket between our two roof valleys. So we're gonna show you how to do that and show you some helpful tips on finding angles with collar ties, ceiling joists, all of that. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. We've got all the roof rafters up now. Me and Jose are gonna start working on putting in the collar ties. We've got one of them installed already. And what this is gonna do this is gonna tie the two sides of the roof together and it's gonna keep the ridge from sagging down and the walls from moving out. So uh, we're gonna do these every 16 inches on center. There will also be ceiling joists going in here. So this thing's really gonna be locked in for justice. Okay, so it was just wait. Maybe we'll just wait a couple minutes. I don't wanna distract Tommy. This is like his eighth cut. It's the last one before the hammer gets thrown. So I'm gonna show you here how to figure out some of the angles associated with this roof. We have a four pitch on our rafters, but our collar ties need to be on the back cut of that four pitch. So you can figure it all out with a speed square. So let me show you. So I'm gonna set up this speed square on a four pitch. Line that four on our common rafter line up with the corner of our lumber. And you'll see if I continue that line, that leaves us at 18 degrees for a four pitch. Now our collar ties need to be the opposite of that cut. They need to be the back cut of a four. So everything in carpentry is usually based around 90 degrees and this is no exception. So we're gonna take 90 minus the 18 degrees of the four pitch and we get 72 degrees. That is the back cut of our four pitch and that's what we need to put on these collar ties before we get them installed. So there you go. We have our four pitch, which is 18 degrees, and then we have the back cut of a four, which is 72 degrees. Everything's based off that 90 degrees. So this way, you'll see when we get our collar ties up there, this back cut is going to trace the elevation of the roof. Recut it. I mean, I don't know. Maybe 34. Okay. My, I don't know. My brain may be a little no work good today. I was adding wrong. There's 223 and a half, and then plus 10 and a half, and then that equals that equals 234. I went 232. I don't know what. I don't know what's going on. Okay. 234. Okay. Everybody loves a comeback story. I already cut my second one though. <laughs> We're using 5 8 inch sheathing on our roof here. A lot of times you'll see OSB being used as sheathing. We prefer to use plywood. It's a little bit stronger, even though it's not completely necessary. 63 and 3 quarters. Yep. Rip that 41. Yep. You'll see here Tom is handing up the plywood to Anthony and he has pre-marked it on 16 inch centers so that as he's nailing it, he can line up the rafters and he doesn't have to measure, make sure that all the nails go into the rafter and we don't have any misses. Cutting in our ceiling joists now and we have to do the same thing on the top of the edge of our ceiling joist, we have to do the back cut of a four pitch. So I'm just using my scraps to uh, trace that. Boom, super easy. So the ceiling joist goes up and then it follows the roof line.
think you're gonna have to do one of these. Oh! Who's the quarterback now? What's going on everybody? We'll probably get a lot of questions on what are you gonna do with this area where the two roofs meet? Good thing you asked, because we're building a cricket. We have our new roof and an existing roof that are two gables, so it's two A's. Where they meet, that's a very vulnerable area for water. So what I ended up having to do is create two valleys and like a shed roof pretty much. So I took the height of the existing ridge, leveled that across, put in all my valley rafters, jack rafters, and then leveled it across when it met here, creating another valley. When it rains on this roof, all the water is gonna channel to this spot. I think it left me with a four pitch, which is a, a good pitch to have in this little area. Very important step. We're getting it done. All right, we got three more LVLs up in the air. These are five and a quarter by nine and a half. And this is essentially really just gonna support a shade sail. So it's a little bit overkill, but on this far side, we are gonna have two hanging chairs coming down. And that's why we have that bit of a cantilever on our deck so that we have room for the chairs to swing back and forth. And our next step here is framing out our outdoor kitchen and our fireplace. So let me show you what we got going on. Where the deck cuts back here, this is gonna be our outdoor kitchen. We're gonna have roughly three foot by 12 foot, so it's gonna be a lot of space. It's gonna be really cool. We're gonna have a grill, we're gonna have a trash drawer, we're gonna have a fridge, we're gonna have some access doors, all of that going here. And then over here, fireplace wall. So right here, we were gonna have just a typical fireplace wall about eight feet wide with a fireplace mantle and a TV, but we decided to jazz it up a little bit. Now we're going almost 11 feet wide and we're gonna have our fireplace, our TV and mantle, but on either side, we're gonna do built-in shelving. So the whole thing is gonna be the same depth. We have to build it out about 16 inches for our fireplace insert. So we'll have two recessed shelves on both sides, and we're gonna do live edge slabs as the shelves themselves. I think it's gonna be really sick, so uh, we're just about ready to get started on that. Did you get that? Did you get the part where I said, did you get that? I did, yep. Okay. Well, that's it for this vlog. I hope you learned a thing or two about roof framing details. Now I'm in the truck. We gotta head back to our other job. They're finally ready for us to finish the pavers. The pool is done, concrete's in, waterfall's in. You're not gonna wanna miss this one, so make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned, and until next time, this is Premier Outdoor Living.